Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know, my name is Jessica Likewise. After 13 years of doing ABA, I am finally sitting for my BCBA exam. I was forced to because I relocated and I can no longer work under my teacher certification. So you're benefiting from that because I'm making videos every day so you can study along with me. Today, we're gonna to be discussing what a behavior actually means in ABA and the properties of measuring a behavior. <music> Well, hey guys and welcome back. Like I said, I'm studying for my BCBA exam and I'm making videos so you can study along with me. Number one, it helps me focus. Number two, it's generous and sharing. And I do believe we're all in this together. So we're going to discuss what is actually a behavior in ABA. Well, behavior is any movement of an organism in an environment that creates some sort of change in that environment. That's your technical definition. The common test we use is called the corpse test, right? The dead body test. Can a dead body do it? If a dead body can't do it, it is a behavior. Riding a bike, behavior. Walking a dog, behavior. Sneezing, behavior. Standing up, behavior. Anything a person can do is essentially a behavior if a dead corpse can't do it. So if a paper is blowing in the wind, that is not a behavior. Only living organisms can have a behavior. If I run after that paper and chase it, well, then that's a behavior, right? So there are different ways in which you can measure a behavior. And we're, you know, if you're taking your BCB exam, you can go into huge detail on what these are and you will need to know that. But that's not what we're gonna do in this video. We're just, just gonna discuss the three properties of a behavior that can be measured. And it's important to know what these terms mean because you will probably see them on your exam. I didn't take it yet, I haven't seen it, but I do see them on a lot of mock questions. The first one is temporal locus. So what that means, it's actually referring to when a behavior occurs. So it, does it occur in the morning? Does it occur in the evening? You know, what time does a behavior occur? You're measuring when a behavior occurs. So the other part is a temporal extent. So temporal extent refers to the duration of a behavior or how long a behavior is lasting for. Does it last all day? Is it doing, is the person doing it for five minutes? That's really what it comes down to. And then repeatability refers to how often a behavior occurs. So this is where you're gonna be taking that frequency data and measuring how often it occurs. So I really hope that this has, you found this helpful. Again, you know, I've not really ever seen these three terms in clinical practice before, um, having done this for 13 years, but you do need to know what they are on your exam. Just memorize them. They're not super complicated terms, but you will need to know what they mean. So all of my videos I'm making, and I'm making several a day, so subscribe to this channel if you're studying for your exam, but all of the videos have an accompanying study note. They're on my website, on my blog. They're not formally edited blog posts. They're just my study notes but you can study with them. They're free, they're a gift to you, because like I said, I do believe we're all in this together. Head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. You can get those notes and send me a question if you have it. I'd love to answer it. And if, you, if I don't know the answer to it, I'd love to know what it is, because if you need to know what it is, I need to know what it is. And like I said, we're all in this studying together. So happy studying, and I'll see you in the next video.